afternoon and welcome to the first season and the first episode of Go Get a Space. I'm delighted to be here today and you know what? It's cold in Kimberley, but you know what they say, job, good job. My name is Intabeleng Lesian and I'm going to be your host for this show. On this show, we're going to be joined by a handsome gent. He's handsome because he was the Mr. Kimberley for 2018 to 2019. He's also young, multi-talented and also an entrepreneur. This episode is informative and beneficial to those people who want to start their own business but are not sure how to do it. Fun fact, did you know that our guest started his business with zero funding? Yes, so keep on watching if you want to know how he did it and how you can do it too. Without wasting any more time, let's get straight into the interview. Let's welcome our first guest, Mr. Bafana Chabalala. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for coming through to the show. It's an honor to be here, man. I love, I love the setup and you look also look beautiful. Thank you. You look good actually. I heard you say I look handsome. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, you were Mr. Kimberly after all, you know. Yeah. So yeah, tell us about that. Tell us about your modeling journey. Uh, my modeling journey started in 2018 when I was still a finalist for Mr. and Mrs. Kimberly. Um, I entered and when I entered, I actually didn't want to go to modeling because of now it's free, it's full of, you know, other things that I could not mention, but mm -hmm. um, I went to actually my girlfriend was the one who forced me to enter this show that I'm so handsome and everything. And, uh, <laughs> okay, like, ah, let me just give it the chance and I gave yeah. it the chance. And I won the Mr. Kimberly title mm -hmm. in 2018 in December, 22nd of December in 2018. Yeah, okay. but it's been a great journey until today. It's been a great journey because people are still calling me. Uh, Mr. Kimberly in 2022. Mm. So I've done my part in 2018 and it still rains until now. Yeah, yeah, you've made a great impact. They still call you Mr. Kimberly yeah, yeah. until this day. Yeah, like you're multi talented. Hey, like how did you go from modeling and into business? Because you're into business, right? I believe it was the time when I went to Johannesburg when I went for 18. Mm -hmm. I was acting in uh, the Jobic Theatre, so I never went to to television because of you know I don't like. I was trying to fit in first into the theatre phase, and after the theatre phase, then I can go to television phase because most of the um, legends that come from um, TV today, they also came from the theatre. Mm -hmm. So I went there for 2019, 2020, and I came back. And after I came back, I couldn't have any funds to go to go back to school. So in that sense, I had to make a plan. Mm -hmm. So after all this experience in Johannesburg, all this hustle in Johannesburg, I didn't sleep. You know, I I, I slept under a bridge in, 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 in Johannesburg because yeah. I didn't have like rent money or anything. Mm -hmm. But whilst I was studying in at Jobic Theatre, mm -hmm. so it came about that, and then. I saw an opportunity for myself to start a business, which in Kimberley, which is Aria Harim Laundry Services. Yeah. Uh, it's operating, but now we moved to the beers. Okay. So do you mind telling us about, you said that you started your own business, right? So do you mind telling us like how the name... So Aria Harim is giving back to people and building people. Mm -hmm. yeah? And also giving quality services to our clients. Excellent, thank you. So you are like you did mention that you did not have any funds when you started your business. Mm. So how did you raise your funds to start? Your uh, how I raised my funds was when I started the business. I was just becoming twenty one, so I never got money. But uh, my uncle gave me a thousand rand. Then mm -hmm. I never got money of from any private institution. Everything, everything I get, yeah. I got a thousand rand. And with that thousand rand, I started buying a board. Mm -hmm. And after buying the board, I started washing blankets. Blanket after blanket, blanket after blanket. And then after that, I started building into the laundry, building into the laundry with the money that I got from the people, from my customers. Mm -hmm. Washing blankets, washing blankets, washing blankets, washing blankets. And then it, it, it came to a point where I could afford a new machine. Mm -hmm. With that, 
150s that I had from washing the blankets. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got to a point of having um, other honey ladies right now with just a thousand rand. That's excellent. Like so many people are probably watching and wondering how they can start their business and they probably have funding. So your story is gonna be inspiring them to get up and you know get mm -hmm. some funds and start their business. With that being said, also like, how does it feel? Did you ever envision yourself being an entrepreneur? Um, I think I was born with this <laughs> because yeah. I've been selling since I was a young kid. Really? So yeah, I've been selling since I was a young kid. Even in in high school, I was selling my assignments mm -hmm. for like three hundred and fifty. Yeah, selling your assignments. My assignments. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> since I've been selling my assignments, I, I was selling the EGD assignments, mm -hmm. which were engineering, graphics, and design assignments whereby we got five packs of it and I was the top student for engineering mm -hmm. so every time the colored kids or the, also the white kids they used to come to me the rich ones they used to come to yeah. me and tell me you know what no man I just want to can you just draw for me this one this paper and this I used to take one page for 150 sometimes three pages for three for 350 and that was where I used to sell my things Mm, that's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. You went to technical high, right? Yeah. Technical high is a technical school, right? Mm -hmm. So there are no business entrepreneurs and yeah. all that. And so you didn't take commercial subjects when you were, when you were in high school. Mm -hmm. So it's quite fascinating how you actually came about, how you got to this journey. Like everything you saw was like a business opportunity. You were monetizing. Yeah, I think that's things. The, 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 some, things, some things are born to be. You know, that's true. And some things we make of it. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was born an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Even before I could decide to be an entrepreneur, I was born an entrepreneur because I, 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 I also went to media and media didn't work for me mm -hmm. because I needed to make money instantly. Mm -hmm. You know, I was that person who wants money instantly. So yeah, then I believe that I could, I was actually born an uh, entrepreneur. Yeah, that's fantastic. Also, like I know that why well, believe rather that life is not a linear, mm. not linear. So we all have like slippery slopes mm. and you know ups and downs. So what is your ups and downs in the business, and how did you overcome your challenges? Um, there's this quote. They say, "Fear and run away, or face it and rise." Yes. So I used to face it and rise. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are so many challenges in business, there are so many challenges, especially in life, also personally, and not even personally, but business in, 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 in itself. There are so many challenges where you feel like you could give up once and leave everything. Mm -hmm. But now there's this thing that's saying, face it and rise. Mm -hmm. That's where you could say, oh, no, man, you need to face it and rise. So in other challenges, you just need to face things and rise to them. Could you give us one example that you've overcome? Yo, guys. <laughs> because I take it that being an entrepreneur is not an easy journey. There has to have been a part, like a stumbling point at some point. Okay, you know, there, there was this thing called uh, family business, which I don't advise each and every one to go into. Mm -hmm. Don't go into family business when you know your family is not financially stable. Um, I was once in a fight with family and everything like that because of the business mm -hmm. uh, that could not satisfy their needs but my aim was to build the business not to satisfy my needs personally yeah now they want the money to satisfy their needs mm. you understand so it was a time whereby i call it a season whereby this season was a hectic season mm. and i stopped everything mm. i even stopped doing laundry, I even stopped doing photography, I even stopped, you know, I stopped all my business just to look back and just sit and watch how they do things. Mm -hmm. And that was the time I overcome it. How I overcome it was just to stop and watch how they are going to do it by mm -hmm. themselves. And I guess then you rose from that. Then you rise from it. You face it. Then. Yeah. So that's how I faced it. Mm, excellent. Yeah. So would you mind giving us your favorite coat or um, motto? life besides face it and rise uh, face everything and rise fortune mm -hmm. favors the bold mm, okay 
Why that? Fortune favors the bold. When you are bold enough to rise to challenges, and then fortune will face you. People like Steve Harvey, Oprah Winfrey, their story is also deeper. Now you cannot get them anyway. Because of what? Because now they are fortunate. Because they, they were bold enough to face what they went through yeah. at that season. Yeah. So I also, I, I'm also going through a season, but now I'm facing it to be fortunate. Yeah. Okay, that's a very good quote. It's <laughs> <laughs> a very good quote. Um, yeah, so I take it that you read a lot of books, right? Or you do read? Yeah, I do read now and then. Okay. Okay, so what's your favorite book and or favorite author? My favorite book was actually is um, The Hustler's Bible by Kay McKenzie, mm -hmm. which is the mayor now of I forgot in in, in Free State. He's mm -hmm. the mayor in Free State. So he's the one who wrote that book. Um, it talks about more about overcoming and how to make money, those type of things, which is the hustle hustler's bible. Mm. So you should go and read it. If you if you need if you are an entrepreneur, you should go read it. The okay, so one last question: mm. How would you define success? What does success look oh, like see, to you? You know, pe people think. Okay, let me just go straight to into social how people view success. People view success through material things, but I yeah. prefer satisfaction. One Chinese guy once said that it's better to be satisfied than to be wealthy. You know, it's better to be satisfied than to be rich, mm -hmm. because of riches comes with stress. It comes with how you can manage and how you gonna make more and how you gonna lose it. But now, when you are satisfied, that's where I call it success. Mm -hmm. Se success to me is satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And that's how my success is gonna be like. If I'm satisfied at this point, good to know man, I'm really happy, my soul is happy, my heart is you know, overwhelmed. You understand? That's how I'm gonna define success. Because now I wake up in the morning, I eat, you know, I bath, and after that I'm satisfied because of why I do the things that I need to do. So me defining success is not by material things, having a big car, having a big house and everything. Okay, those are essential, but it's not everything. But your soul is the one that needs to be satisfied. So you're not thinking of expanding your business like in future years? Uh, it's a plan. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you guys heard from the man himself. He is the owner of Aria Haneng, which means let's build each other mm. when translated to Sitswana. Right. So yeah, thank you for being here once again. I really do appreciate you taking your efforts to come all the way. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and comment down below. If you enjoyed this episode, please do comment down below that you enjoyed it. Say something nice. And yeah, please don't forget to go and support Aria Haneng if you are in Kimberley. And yeah, man, thank you once again for watching the video. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. We have got more episodes coming up and another guest. So